checking out fences today here with John Seeger of Peerless Fencing in West Chicago. John, it would be very tempting to pick out a fence based on looks alone, but I think there are some other factors such as cost and the maintenance of the fencing. Can you tell me some other reasons? Absolutely. The customer really needs to determine how they want to use this fence. Fences are used for safety, for security, for property beautification, privacy. These are all factors that a customer has to determine before they select a fence. So there's a combination of reasons when choosing fencing materials. Can you show me any fencing options that are maintenance free? Yes, I can. Right here is a ornamental aluminum fence product. Aluminum will never rust. The electrostatically applied paint is warranted not to crack, blister, or peel. This is, in fact, probably your best value for ornamental fencing with very, very little to no maintenance. What is the price of this type of fencing? This will range anywhere from the mid-20s per lineal foot up to the mid-40s per lineal foot. Now, this is the type of fence that I know your crew is out installing. I'm going to go to jo join them at the job site and find out a little bit how that's done. The homeowners here have decided on an aluminum fence for around their swimming pool, and that's what we're going to be putting up today. But the installation process is the same, whether you're fencing around an entire yard, a play area, or even around a garden. The difference is, is when fencing around a pool, security is a big concern. Local zoning ordinances may specify the height and design of the fence. In this case, the fence must be at least four feet tall. This is a big job, best done with at least two people. With me is Bob Murphy from Peerless Fence. Bob, I see you've already staked off a line where our fence is going to go. Yeah, first we pound in the stakes and put up the string where the fence line's going just to make sure we get it in a nice straight line. Uh, one thing you need to be aware of is call your local utility companies, make sure you don't damage any cables underground. In this case, we got all overhead cables, so we have nothing to worry about as far as underground. Okay, and then we get marking where our posts are going to go, right? Right, you want to mark on centers, which are six foot and three quarters of an inch, and then you start digging. Well, let's get going. Sounds like a lot of work. This is the corner of the deck, so we've established our starting point. Now we want to mark the centers, which are six foot and three quarters of an inch, the center of the hole. And we want to continue this all the way down the fence line. Bob and I are going to finish marking these post holes. There will be a total of 22 of them for this fence, which will run 130 feet around this swimming pool. We're going to take a break now, but when we get back, I'm going to fire up this gas-powered auger and get to work drilling these post holes. We're going to be installing 130 feet of Delgard aluminum fencing around this pool. Aluminum is a good choice here because it's very strong and the design will make it difficult for children or pets to climb or jump over the fence. We've already gone ahead and marked for our post holes. Now we're going to dig them out, fill them with concrete, and set the posts. Once we've set the posts, we can go ahead, attach the fencing, and finally the swinging gate. But before I get started, I want to show you some of the materials we're going to be using. These are the fence posts, and there's four different types. The fence posts are very important because they're the main support structure of the fence. And if installed incorrectly, the whole fence could topple down. We've got fence posts with holes on both sides so fencing can be attached. For corners, we have right-angled posts. Near the house, we'll be using end posts with holes on only one side. These are the gate posts, which have to be sturdier because they take a lot of wear and tear with the gate swinging open and shut. And of course, we've got these fencing sections to hang between the posts. Now comes the hard work, drilling all the post holes with this gas-powered auger. Fortunately, I've got Bob here to help. Augers like this can be rented for about $60 a day. They're a very efficient way to dig a post hole. In cold climates, fence post holes need to be dug below the frost line. Here in the Midwest, that's about 30 inches below ground, so I'm digging down 36 inches. In warmer climates, you could probably get away with going down about 24 inches, but that depends on the height of the fence. Lynn, there's another tool you can use. It's a manual post hole digger. All you do is throw the diggers in, spread the arms and pull the dirt out. You can rent one of these for under $10 a day, but as you can see, this is a lot more work than our gas-powered auger. You also need to remember when you're digging, dig a cylinder type shape hole, not a cone shape. If you dig a cone shape, the frost can actually grab the side of the footing and push the post right out of the ground. So you want to make sure the sides are straight down. Exactly. However you dig the hole, it's important to remove all the loose dirt because if the bottom of the post isn't resting on hard earth, the post could shift. 
We're ready to set the fence posts. What exactly do we need to do here? Well, we need to make up the concrete. A date like today is it's a little warm out, so we want to use make the concrete a little bit wetter, so we get a little more time for the siding, the adjusting of the of the fence. So that means we can move it around so it's exactly make it level. Right. After we get the concrete in, we put the posts in, fasten the panels, and just keep moving on down the line, and then we adjust the top of the fence. I notice when we're pouring the cement, we're not filling it all the way up to the top of the hole. Yeah, we want to keep the concrete down a couple inches uh, so the grass helps grow around and that helps support the fence uh, from heaving out of the ground. As we install each post and section of fencing, we use a level to make sure that the fence is both level and plumb. That means straight across as well as up and down. Yeah, after we get the posts all filled up with concrete, we can start putting the panels together. So we can start installing those right away, even when the concrete's still wet. Right. Each fencing panel takes a total of six galvanized screws. We use galvanized screws so they don't rust or corrode. These screws are also self-tapping, which means you don't need a pre-drilled hole. We've worked our way around the fence to the gate. It needs to be really sturdy to withstand swinging in and out day after day. This is going to need some really heavy-duty hinges. Right. We want to put on a pretty strong hinge. We want to place it on the outside here. Um, then hang the gate, put the latch on, and then we're going to take off the top screw and adjust it so it self-closes. To complete this job, we're putting on the decorative end caps. Careful not to pound too hard, the posts aren't completely set yet. Bob, thank you so much for showing us how to properly install this aluminum fencing. Now, let's take a minute to review the steps it took to get the fence installed. We staked off the area for the fence, marked the post holes, we used a power auger to dig the hole for the post, set the post in concrete, attached the fencing sections to the post, and installed the gate. Here's our before and after. Brian, installing a fence like this is a three hammer job. This can be done in a weekend, but definitely have the help of a buddy. We managed to install this in one long day, but that's because I had the advantage of working with someone who has a lot of experience installing fencing.